Hello and welcome everyone. It's What's Up Wednesday. Um, I'm your host, Kara Armour for Pro Pet Hero. And I'm excited today because we're combining our Pet Safe Business Spotlight with our What's Up Wednesday. Because I think it's just better to bring the businesses that are so important and doing wonderful things in this world I want to bring those owners on and bring them to the light. And I just think that's something better to do in video. You know, I know everybody's out there busy and it's easier to sometimes watch and listen than it is to read. Uh, but I will also have a blog post with this interview as well. But today I'm really excited to bring David Steinberg from David's Pet Services with us today. And um, his staff has been certified in our course. And he's got a unique entrance into the pet space that I wanted to discuss. I'm not going to give much more of a bio just because I think David's going to do a great job on his own. Uh, but I did want to mention that he has a newborn baby. So for all of you out there that get overwhelmed in this industry and feel like there's a lot on your plate, David has a lot on his plate and he might give us some great ideas on how to manage that or he might just want to cry and vent to us. We'll find <laughs> out. Not sure yet. <laughs> We're not sure yet. But anyways, um, he runs a successful business down in Connecticut. I'm just going to let him, um, you know, dive right in here and let us know you know how we got into his name and how he got started and just kind of david take it i'm gonna i'll jump in with my opinions of course but okay um, great take it away welcome awesome so yes i am a new business owner uh of a pet sitting and dog walking company i started as a therapist um i went to the school of social work where i got my uh degree in clinical social work and that happened to be where i grew up so while I was doing, I literally just clicked a clicker, a dog training <laughs> clicker in my pocket. That happens all the time. So Did I, did I do why, something good? <laughs> yes, you did. You get a treat. Where's my, yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> so um, I was at the school of social work that was in my town. And uh, a lot of my parents, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of the uh, parents of my friends, they were asking me to watch their dogs because my friends were in New York or Boston because that's where you go. Um, usually when you live in Hartford, Connecticut, you end up moving to Boston or is New it, York. Is it but Hartford I stayed... known as the insurance capital or something? Yes. yes. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> Lots super of exciting. underwriters and paperwork. <laughs> Hartford's, hey, Hartford has it. We're, we're getting back there. Um, so anyways, they basically made me watch their dogs. I said, oh, okay, fine. I love dogs. And I never had a dog growing up, which I think maybe even gave me a little bit more hunger to just be with dogs because I always wanted one, but we never got one at my house. So anyways, I was doing a lot of this pet sitting and I got really, really interested in dog training. I was watching things on TV, on YouTube, and it just was so much fun. I just loved doing it so much. So um, I got pretty good at it and we ended up getting um, some business cards. Now, when I got a business card, people thought that I was just the biggest business ever. It's like you have a business card and then boom, they thought I had... Well, that's you know, how it a whole starts. <laughs> corporate situation. So um, at that point, I had about nine or ten clients, and uh, people started passing the business card around. So I got hired right out of uh, the school social work. I passed my licensing exam. I started doing therapy, and I got hired right in the middle of West Hartford Center. So I thought I might move away after college, but I ended up going to grad school there, being a therapist right in the middle of town and running a pet sitting business there. So I didn't go anywhere from where I grew up. Um, so then from there, uh, I was seeing clients ages 5 to 25, and I was teaching parents on how to parent, uh, which really helped me become an amazing dog trainer. Um, <laughs> I can well, imagine. Who knows if I'm amazing, but at least better than average, maybe? I don't know. So um, Click, give then, yourself a treat. <laughs> yes. Um, num, 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 num. <laughs> so... Um, it was just such an interesting career that had so many parallels in the business that I'm doing now. But at the same time, it just wasn't possible for me to stay with my clients and give them 60% or 70%. Your therapy or, clients or your... Exactly. Your, okay. My therapy clients. Uh, and they really needed support and I needed to be there 100%. So it's really hard to run a full-time dog walking and pet sitting business and be a therapist for clients who really, really need you. Um, so, did you have your parents own, and things like that? Did you have your own therapy business, or were you working for somebody, or how does how does that? Luckily, work? yeah, luckily I um, made a few calls and I got hired uh, 
right out of school. Um, and it was just basically a private practice that um, I signed on with them and they sent me referrals. And um, it was just a great place to start my career there. Um, so then once my birthday started to come around last year, that's when I was going to recertify my license as a therapist. And I talked with so many different people, you know, should I make the leap? I know that the industry is there. Um, a lot of people watching this might know who Bella Vasta is. Yeah. She opened my eyes to just everything that's out there in the pet sitting and dog walking world. And I didn't know that I could really sustain someone like that. I found other people who were consultants and I was like, there's consultants for this industry alone. There's and enough there are... of the industry that there's people consulting about it. I know. is That I, that blew my mind. The support <laughs> was just unreal. Yeah. So I made the leap of faith. I did not recertify. I retired at the age yeah. of 28 as a therapist. <laughs> um, and I moved on. I went from humans to dogs. Wow. that That's fantastic. I mean, that's, you've you've made a connection that I think some people sort of subconsciously make between working with dogs and working with people. Um, you know, in this business, it's difficult because most of us get into it because we are pet lovers. But you do have to, you know, I, I tell my employees a lot of this is psychology. You know, you have to be able to present bad information about a dog's behavior in a good way. Yeah. Um, so I think your background is extraordinary. It's definitely different. You're the only therapist I know of in 14 years that's, you know, sure. entered into the pet sitting field. But I think your foundation and background in therapy will help you immensely. I mean, you've already experienced that with the training. Absolutely. Um, and I love that you use positive reinforcement. I think that's fantastic. I think there's so much that people need to research and learn about that. And, um, you know, shaping skills and a lot of that, I, I'm very much in, into agility and there's this, um, there's, this I've seen that. Yeah. The, the bad Looks dog, so cool. yeah, the bad dog agility, which is a podcast I listen to, uh, they're heavy into positive reinforcement and they have children and they've started positively training their children. And it's just, you know, I, I, I think that's great. Um, you know, now, yeah, it's so it's, it's really interesting because, uh, people always say, wait, so you're saying you train your dog just like you're going to train your kids. And they're like, that's so wrong. Why would you train your kids uh -huh. like you would a dog? And the reason is it's because you are training or teaching, however, whatever word you want to use, you're treating them the exact way they want to be treated. You're not inserting your input. You're waiting for them to do things uh, that they can learn on their own and then just making. reinforce them yeah. and give them great feedback and really just focus on the relationship. So it's keeping the relationship just at the, at the uh, forefront of everything. Um, having a great attitude, having lots of patience and rewarding um, generously for things that you do like. And if you do that with any being on this world, I don't care if it's an armadillo or if it's a giraffe, you want to treat them with positive reinforcement and you don't want to use negative punishment sometimes people, they use punishment without even realizing it. Yeah. I, I think part of it is hard because it's innate and it's also how we were raised, you know, take away something, you know, punish you to your room. But you've actually, just to step back to kind of your therapy days and translating that into pet sitting, you've helped us. You've helped me. Uh, you wrote, I believe it's a blog post for Bella or somehow about, Good, yeah. um, you know, handling our employees. And that's something that we all become business owners, and if you if you want to grow, you have to have staff. And Absolutely. you know, having them kind of set the boundaries for the policies and the reinforcements. It, I I just I enjoyed learning that, and it's it's wonderful because you know I've been in the pet industry for a while, and I still am learning from people because yeah. you bring you bring your experience to the industry, so it's not this yeah. closed you know closed entity that you know we can't all benefit from so i, I just Absolutely. think you know that was fascinating that you brought and up. i just want to throw it out there that i am definitely not perfect uh <laughs> well, and none i of us always are. i always make it seem like i know a lot more than i do that's just something that you know your viewers should know about me but anyways <laughs> um well you're sharing it, and helpful and that's you know that's something that i think that they should take away too <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that but the one thing that's just really so interesting is that um you know with positive reinforcement um it's, you know, it's really, really easy to do. Uh, but at the same time, it just depends on if you're frustrated or not. Because if I get frustrated with an employee or something, and let's say they fed a dog, and I didn't want them to feed the dog. Okay, if you tell them, you know, you fed the dog, why did why did you do that? Uh, things like that. 
you're starting to kind of think in like this punishment mindset. You're saying something and, and you just have to ask yourself, why are you saying this right now? How would do you that want them to do it? Feel? Exactly. Yeah. Do you want them to be happy employees and be, you know, not like best friends, but buddies with you and have a great experience? And do you, do you want to nag them? Or do you want to think of how can I make them do something better for the next time so that they're happy to do it? They don't resent working for me. And that communication is easy so that you can keep those employees for a while and have a great business and things like that. So it's, oh, I always have to catch myself if <laughs> someone makes a mistake in the in the field. And in our industry, mistakes will happen every day. There's nothing that you can do about it. You have to control for the big mistakes, but then you can't expect perfection. Um, so when something like that happens, you have to have some sort of plan of action that you know that even when you're frustrated, you can go to and you're not going to just listen to um, that thing that says fight, you know, be defensive, <laughs> which we all have as soon as we're tired, hungry, upset, cranky, <laughs> baby sleeping, and, yeah. you know, for three hours and then up for an hour. And then, you know, so um, it's not fair to your employees. No one cares what's going on at home. They just want to be happy. And you want them to do better next time. And if you want that, you just have to be really, really careful about how you communicate and how that would feel to you if you were to be on the receiving end. That's that's a really wonderful lesson, both in pet sitting and life, because you know the people listening to this are going to be pet care professionals and just pet owners and parents of and kids parents and exactly. And I encourage them, you know, to to listen to this because, you know, I've been a manager. I started off as retail manager, and I was, you know, I I feel sorry for the staff that I had back in the day because I was still learning, and mm. I've developed a lot of my processes and and how I manage things and. You know, you have to remember these are people and these are dogs and dogs are sentient beings. And, you know, there's a lot on the line. Yeah, there's a yeah. And it's just I think that's that's an important message. And thank you for getting that out there. And while you have this, um, you know, terrific business and this newborn, let's talk about oh, your yes. future. Where do you see <laughs> David's pet settings, you know, David's pet services in the next, let's say, five years? Where do, where yeah. do you see this going? Well, first of all, my newborn baby, his name is Diego, and uh, I didn't name him with a first letter D for no reason. DPS. <laughs> oh, he's just gonna, saying. He stuck with always got to be thinking. <laughs> um, but anyways, so you know, I just I love running a business. It's so much fun. You know, you get to pretend like you're one of those guys on Shark Tank, <laughs> or you get to you know pretend like you're t you know what you're talking about when people are talking about like big companies and corporations on the stock market and stuff. And it's just, it's just so fun to just run this business, this small business. It, it is. And I really just want to grow it in the best way that I can to, um, I mean, let's just face it, to make a lot of money, first of all, and to work with dogs. I mean, I get to just work with dogs and make money. I mean, that's just a great, fulfilling thing. And at the same time, really mm -hmm. just promote positive dog training to the masses because you just see so many people handling their dogs wrong and not really understanding. Or the big names uh, that have made it them. to the market that, you know, yeah. <laughs> we won't mention. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we don't have to talk about him here, but <laughs> so, you know, it's the, it's the big, I don't know. Did I say three things? It's to make a lot of money. Yep. Of course. So let's just be honest here, people. It's to live. It's to do that fulfillingly, you know, to do something you absolutely love to, to go for your dreams, uh, don't be scared to um, to get out there. If you don't think you have a good name or a good logo, just get out there. You know, uh, that's just a good lesson. But overall, really, just to grow it. Who knows where uh, where where I'll go from here? I mean, I usually get ahead of myself, but right now, what I'm really trying to do is make sure that my employee handbook is perfect, so that when I get all of this, um, hopefully, all these new clients, and I expand. I have the backbone of my business 100% set. So that is my, you know, in three months from now, I want that to be perfect with exams. And on day one, we do this and all the paperwork you need for new hires and everything like that. So then I can grow the business with marketing, um, do whatever I can, network, go door to door, you name it, I'll do it. <laughs> and um, once I've got that backbone set with the employee handbook and, the, and uh, all the policies, then I could feel comfortable really just expanding and putting people in different positions. Um, but the hardest thing that I'm experiencing now 
is managing all three aspects of our business, yeah. which is doing the walks, operating the walks and scheduling, and then doing all of the business. Those are three parts of the business. So I'm just sort of just moving my way up. So eventually, you know, I do some walks and I do some of the operations and then I'll just sort of keep moving and I'll do most of the operations, maybe a couple walks and then some of the operations and most of the business. And then eventually I want to be just doing the marketing, the, um, the website, accounting, all that stuff and kind of have that system set up that I can know that the walkers and the operations will be perfect. But that's a process that I need to learn from by being an operator and eventually I can write a handbook for them. And it's just really just doing it one brick at a time, but at the same time, not being scared to really get out there and think that everything has to be perfect. Because if you think like that, you know, your competitors will be at the finish line. You're doomed. Much, yeah. much from you. I mean, it sounds wonderful that you have that, that roadmap mapped out. And I'll tell you, that's exactly the process that my business went through. But man, it took me a lot longer. I learned things the hard way. We didn't have coaches back in my day. We didn't yeah. have these Facebook groups that are fantastic and full of wonderful people sharing, which is amazing. And I think that's important that you recognize that. And, um, you know, there's that book, The E-Myth Revisited, that talks about being a technician, a manager, and an entrepreneur. And you're going through that right now. You started off as a technician yeah. and an entrepreneur. You right. were dreaming and you were doing the work. And then you now you're in the manager phase, a little bit of the technician, and now your marketing is the entrepreneurial side. So you're going through that transition. And I think that's something that it, it – allows personal growth and it's just it's it's a fun and sort of unnerving and exciting time so you're yeah I mean your business you, you know what to do I mean setting up and and training is particularly important if you have that handbook to go through and yeah. you have the training practices and that kind of brings us around to you know how I got connected with you was you know through the the forums but also because you put your staff through the pro pet hero program and I just oh, wanted yeah. to you know ask quickly how you felt that went and um, what value that brings to your business because that's kind of why we're here today. Yeah, I just so. want to be completely honest. I mean, that was such a load off our shoulders to find this pro pet hero. I've done all of the pet CPR and first aid trainings. I've gone live. I've done a really, really long one online. And then I found this one that is the perfect length, the perfect price. Um, you know, I promise you that she did not tell me to say this beforehand <laughs> at all. I didn't. <laughs> but there's a reason why I've stuck with you guys um, you know, they never expire. These are things that really matter. They, they don't expire. Am I right on that? Well, they expire wanna... in two years. Oh, pff. okay. But so if still, you buy them, yeah. I mean, two... just because, okay, you know, just... protocols change, you need to be able to remember. I mean, do you remember what you learned two years ago? You know, I, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, but it's, it, so that's amazing that it's two years. Usually it's like a month or something. You have to use them right away. Um, and it's two years full access. You know, you get the weekly videos, but you also can watch the course for two full years until it expires. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> that's just wonderful. Um, and the fact that I can just kind of manage it, and I understand it's kind of like my time to pet yeah. CRM that I use. It's just everything's there, and I don't have to spend extra time tracking things down and getting links and activation things. Yeah, you can And then if there's any issue, they'll over. just help you. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I'm going to stop being a salesman for you in a second, but what I absolutely <laughs> love going. are your um, emails that come in weekly. Usually, yeah. you know. Email marketing, it's you just kind of just delete, 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 whatever. But like these things, I actually watch them. But they're video I don't know if you know email this. marketing. Oh, yeah. That's just next level. Um, I watch them. I share them with my employees. I've used them in training. Um, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I just, I, I'm very happy to have you on this program. And I love to share with our followers and with the public just what people are doing, how they got into the pet space and what their future is. And so I just have a quick question. Do you think knowing your passion for training, do you think that you will continue with the pet care services as well as training or will you lean more towards training or where do you see, where do you see that going? Yeah, so that's the, the question of the hour, of the day, <laughs> the month, whatever that saying yeah. is. Um, basically, I've been told it's really good to, you know, just focus on one thing. Yeah. But it's so hard for me to give up the dog training. So I have to be really disciplined. Uh, in I have to, I guess, draw a balance between um, being a disciplined business owner and just doing exactly what you love. So what I've been doing is uh, kind of a practical approach with my dog training. 
Um, we do dog training all the time with yeah. every single thing that we do because you have to. I mean, you have to deal with dogs the right way uh, and you don't want to deal with dogs the wrong way because then you get in trouble. So we, we really we just push training and uh, dog training in employee training a lot. But um, what we do is we have a trainer and I train as well for the clients that we have existing, but we don't advertise that we're just a training um, company just yet. Um, I had visions of starting a training company, but that's just starting another business, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a sub-business. It's David's Pet Services. We've got a lot of things going on. But every single thing you add, um, it just takes it takes a long time. So if there are issues uh, in our client list, we will send the trainer out uh, for a few sessions and try to resolve that in-house. Um before you know, you're gonna give them the boot. Yeah, that's, uh, that's valuable. It's it's definitely valuable. I I've struggled with that in my business too. Um, I you know I added grooming. I had a holistic pet supply store, and I was diversified all over the place. And then you right. lose you lose the ability to focus on you know your one good thing that you're doing right, and that also complicates your processes. So if you want to eventually be the person that's you know in the office more managing and working on the marketing, it's harder to do that when there's a training call coming in and you're the trainer available or you're being pulled in too many different directions. So that's a valuable, it's it's great that you know that where your focus has to remain and, and that can Absolutely. shift and change as the industry shifts and change. But at least for now, it's a nice service to be able to offer, not yeah. only just your clients, but your employees. You know, it's, we're a valuable resource to them. They, a lot of them are animal lovers, but they've had one or two dogs their entire life. They haven't had a dog that used an easy walk that pulled or. And even worse, they're just learning from experience and not starting with the theory. I mean, that's okay if you start from experience, but you got to get to the theory. So it's tough when you're dealing with someone who's kind of just done it their whole life and has never really checked on, um, peer reviewed science. Yeah. That is just, that are just absolute truths that you just can't avoid. Yeah. Well, David, I wanted to thank you. We're unfortunately out of time. This thank is my you. least favorite part, but yeah. thank you, thank you for taking the time in your busy, busy day. And I hope Diego got a nap or, or something. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He's with Grandma right now. Oh, She's perfect. as happy as can be. He's as happy as can be. Uh, but I'm starting to miss him, so I got to go get back to him. Well, take care and thanks again. And uh, and thank you. We'll be talking to you soon. Bye. Absolutely, such a pleasure. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye.